So, you're the proud owner of a Canon M50. Excellent choice, my friend. Or you wanna buy one? Then don't hesitate, cause you won't regret it. I've been using this neat little camera for around six months now, and I'm still impressed. It has its flaws, but I mean, what camera doesn't have flaws, right? And you know what? You can turn the Canon M50 into a cinematic video beast with just a few cheap improvements. We can go from this to this. So let me show you what you need to do if you want to shoot cinematic video with your Canon M50. Two simple things. Okay, cinematic. Cinematic, 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 cinematic. Are we tired of that word yet? Maybe, right? It's popular, it's a hype, but I mean, there's a reason why it's so popular. The cinematic look just looks good. And there are a lot of videos on YouTube that try to explain what makes that cinematic look. Some claim that it's the camera, but trust me, it's not the gear. Just watch five Hollywood movies and chances are that they all look different and they're all made with a different camera. So the type of camera that you use is not that important. I mean, it helps a little bit, but you don't need an expensive camera to shoot some cinematic videos for YouTube or even clients. There are even Hollywood movies shot on an iPhone, so, you know. The first thing, the first problem that you might have with your Canon M50 involves light and depth of field, and both go hand in hand actually. Just watch any Hollywood movie and you'll see that the depth of field is always always very very shallow. So what settings do you need for a shallow depth of field? There's one really important, aperture. Open it all the way, the lower the number the better. Now if you open the aperture that means more light is coming in, so your footage is at risk of being overexposed, you need to compensate it somehow. Maybe lower the ISO, but once you're at ISO 100 you can't go any lower. You can try and set a higher shutter speed, but the higher the shutter speed, shutter speed shutter speed wow that's a difficult one the higher the shutter speed the more you're gonna freeze the action and your footage is gonna look artificially sharp and jittery shutter sp shutter speed jesus if you want that cinematic look you need to keep the shutter speed at around 1 50th of a second and shoot at 24 or 25 frames per second what you want is just a little bit of motion blur so ideally Aperture all the way open. For my Canon 22mm, that means f2, which looks great by the way. Shoot at 24 frames per second and shutter speed 1 50th of a second. And here in my studio, that looks great. I'm using these settings right now to film this video. But if you go outside with these settings, a lot more light is gonna come in and your footage is probably gonna be overexposed. Because the aperture is all the way open and the shutter speed is 1 50th of a second. So what are you gonna do? The ISO so is already 100 so you can't go any lower and you can't crank up the shutter speed because it's not gonna look good. The only thing you can do is close the aperture and a lot of times when I go outside with my Canon M50 I have to set the aperture at f22 and then it looks something like this. I mean it's not bad but it's also not cinematic but luckily there's a solution. What you need is this, a neutral density filter and it's basically a dark piece of glass that you screw onto your lens and it reduces the amount of light that comes in. So that means you can keep your aperture all the way open, even in bright daylight. And that's what you need for that shallow depth of field. And it doesn't have to be expensive guys, there are cheap ones out there. This one for example was just $20. I'll link a few of them in the description. And you can buy one that reduces the light by one fixed stop, two stops, six stops, even ten stops like this one. Or you can buy one that's variable. So you can choose anything between one or ten stops. And then if you use one of those filters, in bright daylight your footage will look something like this. Looks a lot more cinematic, right? So let's take a look again without the neutral density filter. And here's with the neutral density filter. And this footage is color graded, guys. And that's actually the second thing we need to fix on our Canon M50. I'm pretty sure that 90%, maybe even more, 99% of all Hollywood movies are color graded. They don't look awesome straight out of camera. There's always a team of people to make sure that it looks the way it does in the movie theater. 
Now, what you need if you want to color grade is a flat color profile on your camera. You want your footage to have all the information in the highlights and the shadows, and it looks something like this. It doesn't look good, right? But the thing is, you can color grade this footage however you want. You can make it look like this, or like this, or maybe even like this. Whatever you want. Now, a lot of expensive cameras have a flat color profile. You might have heard of Canon's C-Log. Well, that's what you need if you want to color grade. But the problem is that the M50 doesn't support a flat color profile. You can choose the natural color profile, or a neutral color profile, or even a black and white color profile. But the problem with all of these color profiles is that there's no room for color grading. You can't give your footage a specific look. What you see is what you get. Now, there is a solution. There is a color profile out there that you can download and use with your Canon M50. I think it was designed for the Canon 5D originally, but it works great with the Canon M52. It's not the same as Canon C-Log profile. It's not the same quality. It's actually just a simulation of a C-Log or a flat profile. But if you want to start experimenting with color grading with your M50, then this is what you need. And I think it's excellent. I've been using it for a while now and it does the job. And this profile is called CineStyle. Now, the only disadvantage that CineStyle has is that it boosts the shadows a lot, especially when you're shooting in low light. Now, I've been using this profile to shoot all my YouTube videos in this pretty dark studio and okay, there is some noise in the shadow areas, but it's not that bad and it doesn't ruin your footage. Just make sure that you pay attention to it when you're in a really, really low light situation. Okay, so how do you install CineStyle on your Canon M50? It's super simple, but I'm not gonna explain it here because there are a lot of videos out there that explain it a lot better than I would, so I'll just link those in the description. It's super simple, takes only 5 minutes. But I definitely recommend installing this color profile because it's a great way to start learning about color grading and everything that comes with it, without buying an expensive camera. Of course, you need to learn how to color grade, but again, I'll link some videos in the description because plenty out there. And that's it guys, that's all you need. The Canon M50 is a great little camera out of the box, but buy a neutral density filter and install the CineStyle profile and your footage will look a lot more cinematic. I mean, it won't be the same as a real cinema camera like an Alexa or a RED, but who needs those, right? You can get great results with your Canon M50. For YouTube and your own little projects, it's a setup that you can beat. So if you're looking for a cheap way to make your footage look more cinematic, this is it. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.